in a setup where we are known. Oh, which church do you belong to? By the church you say in which denomination they belong to. So it became a denomination, it became a religion more than what God wanted in his heart about his church. That's what we are going to see. We don't belong. God's people, the saints of God who are seated here, and those people who are hearing us will know that God did not want each and any one of us to be in any denomination or any belong to any group. God wanted us to be from what the Bible says we have to be. Turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 11 from verse 11 to 15. One person read from Matthew 11 from 11 to 15. Yeah. Yeah. 11 to 11, right? Yeah. Mary, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater, risen a greater than the John the Baptist, notwithstanding that, that is at least in the kingdom of heaven, is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violence taken by force, for all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John, and if ye will receive it, this is a like Elias, which, was, which he was born to come. And he that hath pleased to hear, let him hear. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we come to you in Jesus' precious name. We bring before you the word of God. Lord, we commit it to your hands. We pray that you would bless this word, break it, and feed our hungry soul. Help us to know you more. Amen. Through your word, what you want us to be, what you ought us to be. So, Lord, submit to your will, to your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here you see, the laws and the prophets were only until John the Baptist. From John the Baptist until now, 19th of January 2020. Next week if I come, we come together now. Until the Lord Jesus Christ appears in the mid heavens to receive his church, the word now applies. From the John the Baptist until now, what is suffering violence? Kingdom of heaven suffered violence. Kingdom of heaven suffered violence. Not religion, not denomination, not an organization, but the kingdom of God is suffering, suffering violence and the violent take it by force. The violent take it by force. Two things apply is here. One, kingdom. Second is what? Violence. Each and every one of you are called to be violent in the kingdom of God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What come? Thy kingdom come, not the religion come. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Eating and drinking is not the come on. Say it. Kingdom of God. Eating and drinking is not the kingdom of God. But righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Jesus never spoke about religion. He never spoke about denomination. He never spoke about any organization. He spoke about the kingdom. You and I belong to the kingdom of God. Somebody turn to the next person and say kingdom. Amen. We are inside the kingdom. We are inside the kingdom of God. Inside the kingdom, you need to know what are the principles. What are the lives of a kingdom? How will a king dress himself? How will a queen dress her, herself? How will the sons, the, the princes and the princesses, how will they dress themselves? What are the food they will eat? How they will sit in the table? What, 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 what are all the lifestyle? What time they get up in the morning? How they live? We need to know the principle in the kingdom. Today, the kingdom of heaven wants each and every one of us to know your and my lifestyle in the kingdom of God. If we would only get this thing right, our life will become very easy, our life will become very stress-free, relaxed, we would not worry about anything. We wouldn't worry about anything. That is why Jesus said, do not worry about what you shall eat or what you shall put on or where you shall live. 
because your father in heaven is knows what you what you are made of. It is at that time he said, Seek me first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things shall be added to you. Until you know this, you will keep on worrying about your personal life, your family life, your spiritual life. Everything will be always be to be a worry. Brother, could you please pray for me? Sister, could you please pray for me? Because you don't have a kingdom mindset. Once you have a kingdom mindset, you will not go and tell anybody, please pray for me. Have you seen the queen coming and telling somebody, please pray for me? Have you seen the queen going to the people outside the palace and say, please, can you help me? I'm really short of money. Can the queen say that? No. Because she's in the kingdom. Everyone must have this kingdom lifestyle, a kingdom mindset, a kingdom principles, kingdom, 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 everything about kingdom. You pray like a king. You walk like a king. You dress like a king. You speak like a king. Don't complain. Don't mourn about anything. Praise be to God. I'm going to quickly share with you that's going to really encourage you. Really encourage you. How far I have, have. Please bear with me out for putting this introduction. I want to quickly rush through and take you to a, in an important message which the Lord put in my heart to share. First, read for me. Uh, verse. In verse 11, you read, uh, which uh, our brother uh, Stephen read. It says, Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven, note the word least in the kingdom of heaven, Joshua. Can you just do that for me, please? Matthew 11, 11. Matthew 11, 11. Quickly go and put that for me. Matthew 11, 11. Can you see the word least in the kingdom of heaven? Amen. Note the word. Underline the word. No, least. Amen. If you have a pen, please underline the word least. Brother, do you have a pen? Jenima, pass this pen to everyone. Quickly go and pass this pen if they don't have a pen. Joshua, now give that. Sit there, please. That's a minister. Give the Jenima children. Praise God. Underline the word least. Underline the word least. Okay. Next one. You have to give the uncles a safe and repose. Okay, give them a yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah she's got sister's one. Stephen got a safe and repose if you have a You got it? Amen. Praise God. Not the word, least you got it? Amen. Next word. Read for me. Uh, in verse 12, the violent take it by force. Not the word violent. Underline the word violent. Violent. Verse 12, the last line, you will see a word called violence. You got it? Thank you. Violent. Amen. Fifteenth verse. Half years. Fifteenth word. Half years. He that half years. Half years. Thank you, Jenny. You got this. You got it? Three things for the Lord is expecting each and every one of God's people inside the kingdom of God is least violent half years. Least violent half years three points i want to mention here who is the least i want to call the least as humble first in lifestyle in the kingdom of god is humbleness amen the second word i want to call herculean am i pronouncing it right brother colin and uh, brother rob yes, yes herculean herculean the third word is a word called hungry Write it down. Three words. Hungry. Sorry. Humble. Humble. Herculean. And hungry. Write it down. Humble. Herculean. Herculean. H-E-R-C-U-L-E-A-N. Herculean. And hungry. These are the three things. God is expecting each and every one of us to be in the kingdom of God. If you apply these things, these three things in your life, in Christian life, inside the kingdom of God, you have everything. There is no person rich like you. There is no person wealthier like you. There is no person joyful like you. There is no person happy like you. There is no person peaceful like you. 
There's no person relaxed like you. There's no person happy, happy always. No wonder a man by name called Apostle Paul, inside the prison, having his hands bound and legs with fetters of chain, writing to the Philippians church and says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say unto you, Rejoice. How can he say that? In other place, his hands were bound, his, hand, his legs were put, uh, fetters were chained, uh, with fetters of chain were down on his legs, but his mouth was loose. He began to praise God, hallelujah, glory to God. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of praise, hallelujah. Tongue was loose. He kept on praising and worshiping God. Suddenly in the midnight watch, the earthquake, the doors were broken to pieces. The prison, whole prison shook. The chains fell off from their hands. The legs fell off from their hands. They're worshipping God. Why? Doesn't matter whatever situation you are in, in the place where you are. If you have a kingdom lifestyle, if you have a kingdom mindset, praise be to God, you will turn the situation in favor of you. You understand what I'm saying? You will turn the situation in favor of you if you have a kingdom mindset. Many times people have come and discouraged us. Oh, you made a wrong decision, my ability. You shouldn't have done. You should have just gone and rented a place. And just, you know, 20, 30 pounds, 40 pounds, just give for rent and just stay. You should have resigned, you should have resigned your job. All these kind of, I mean, imprisonment of possibilities. They are what, sorry? Imprisonment of possibilities. They are coming with possibilities by imprisoning you. But God wants to bring you out, out of the imprisonment, to walk in the freedom of impossibilities. Amen? He wants you and me to walk in the freedom of impossibilities. People will come with the, with the, with the, possible, the imprisonment of possibilities. You could have done that. You could have stayed where you are. You made a wrong decision. You shouldn't have gone up in your job. You shouldn't have taken a risk to buy this big house. You shouldn't have done that. They are all imprisonment of possibilities. A brother or a sister who is in the kingdom mindset, who lives in the kingdom lifestyle, will always take a risk in the kingdom of God. Did you hear me? He will take risk in the kingdom of God. Your husband might be discouraging you. Your wife might be discouraging you. Your family members might be discouraging you. Church members might be discouraging you. But no, the Bible says, and David strengthened himself in his law, in his God. Glory be to God's holy name. The kingdom lifestyle is being least or humble, Herculean, and humble. Why did I say humble? Please turn with me to Matthew 30, 31 to 32. Matthew 30, 31 and 32. Glory to God. Glory to God. You see here in verse 31. Joshua, bring the verse 31 now. It, the, that mustard seed is the least of all seeds. The mustard seed is the least of all seeds. But what he did is, he sowed in his field. He sowed in his field. Sowing is very, very important, brother, sister. Praise be to God's holy name. He sowed in verse 32. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and become a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. When you humble yourself, brothers and sisters, amen, praise God, verse 31 is your investment. When you invest in the humble brother or a humble sister will always invest. A brother sister who is always humble will love to invest in the kingdom of God. It might be their time, it might be their energy, it might be their money, it might be their talents, it might be their skills, it might be their abilities. These people are humble, they want to invest. All I told somebody, Stephen, uh, Stuart, 
and can you, can you make sure that you just turn the thermostat down, switch the heating off, and put it back on this morning? No. That shows the humbleness. Who are you to tell me? I won't do. That's not humbleness. Stephen? Stephen, Brother Stephen Diplos, last time I spoke to him and said, this is the work to be done. And he got me here this morning. I told Brother William, Brother, can we do this for me? Can you do this for camel service? Done. Mm -hmm. A humble brother, a humble sister will always love to invest. <laughs> and anyone who had invested or ever invested in the kingdom of God, proving their humbleness, what happens in the verse 32 is, the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. People will come and find their identity in you. If you are investing from your part, the people's part will find their identity in you. Glory to God. I'll tell you an example. Dr. Miles Mandra, how many of you know Dr. Miles Mandra? We're going to be in the world from Bahamas. He was 18 years old when his Prime Minister of Bahamas, is the Prime Minister of President of Bahamas, what did he say? Okay, the Prime Minister, just say for example Prime Minister. His Prime Minister gave his life to the Lord through Dr. Miles Mandrome when he was 18 years old. He led the worship and he preached the gospel and his Prime Minister was sitting at the back stage, in the, on the stage and all the young men, young women came and gave the life to the Lord. At that time he heard the footsteps going behind him. He turned around, his Prime Minister was walking down the stage and come and joined the queue and gave his life to the Lord. I'll tell you what happened after that. This Miles Monroe became old. He should be on his 40s or 50s. He was on his way from Bahamas to connection flight to go somewhere else. And he was sitting in the airport while he was waiting for the flight. He just happened to have a small nap before he was very tired traveling from a long journey. And his Prime Minister came to all the bodyguards and tapped him on his knee. Get up. He's from Prime Minister. Prince. The Prime Minister asked him, who's the Prime Minister? You or me? So you, sir. What's what's what I was in this? Every single country I go, I say I'm from Bahamas, the Prime Minister. The next question they ask me, do you know Dr. Miles Mondo? We know Dr. Miles Mondo. <laughs> Every single country. Wherever I go, I introduce myself. I say I'm the Prime Minister of Bahamas. Then the next question they say to me, Oh, we know Dr. Miles Mondo. Everybody knows you. So we ask you where the Prime Minister the Prime Minister. <laughs> he says, the East that is in you. The East that is in you is very least among all the saints. But you know the greatness of the investment that you do. The Lord, the heirs of the birds will come and lodge in your branches. Somewhere people will be there to talk about you. I can't share about my testimony because Jenny told me uh, that I'm trying to perform, show performance by exalting myself. I'll say humble testimony that happened. Many people are blessed through our church ministry. One important testimony is a one young man who came and sat my dad uh, in my hometown. He said, I want to see Johnson. My dad said, Johnson's not here. Uh, he's gone to the UK. Uh, he's serving the Lord there. And he said, what are you doing? He said, I'm an evangelist, full-time servant of God. I'm serving the Lord here. So how are you became, oh, what happened? Just tell your testimony. He said, I came this time came to this town from Chennai, from a village, to this Chennai town, to come in the city field, to become the, in, the, in the Hollywood, in the Bollywood. I want to come in the Bollywood to be a step master. I want to, I want to improve my skills and go with that line. But Brother Johnson called me into a, into a house and preached the gospel to me. That time I gave the life to the Lord, now I'm a servant of God. I shared the gospel to him when I was a young man. Years of road, many years of God, now he's a servant of God. Don't know what you're investing. Keep investing because people one day will find their identity through you. Not now. Not now. The time will come. People will tell. Oh, I know that brother. I know that sister. I, I was blessed by them. I was blessed by that sister. I was blessed by that brother. Our dear brother, they have been blessed by many people have come to our church and have been blessed. They have gone to different places. They have, they have been blessed, but they will never forget the fellowship they had here. We thank God for the church we came and worshiped together. I was, I was speaking to Brother Paul Lee the other day, yesterday, and he said, Brother, I thank God for your church, Brother. You know why? Because I had an opportunity to worship the Lord.
be a sister Betty. Sister Betty Harker, what God gave the Lord, he said, while she was alive, she was fed by you, brother. You fed her with the word of God. She was blessed in this church, and we had the opportunity to come and worship the Lord with her in your church. So we thank God for your church, he said. This is how God will, people will find their identity in you, through you, when you are investing in the kingdom of God. That is why I say, humble, or least the kingdom of God. Who knows? Who knows? One day God can completely change Stephen Croker, amen, upside down, and he will be able to come and take the mic and preach. Who knows Stephen DeBros uh, or will come and become a worship leader? Who knows Stuart will be a preacher, Bible teacher one day? God is able to make praise God to turn each and every one of us a vessel of honor in his hands if only we are ready to invest in the kingdom of God. You might not have money, that's fine. Just invest your time. You might not be well in singing, but if you are well in playing the instruments, invest in the kingdom of God. Do something in the kingdom of God. Keep on investing. People will find identity in you. That's what God wants for each and every one of us. In the kingdom of God, least harm. Amen. Praise be to God's holy name. Matthew 11. Amen. Praise God. 28 to 30. Quickly read for me. Amen. The Lord says to the people of Israel, to all the people who are who have never accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, you are heavy with laden. You are heavy laden and you are laboring too much. You have too much burden on you. Come unto me and put your labor and your heavy laden down here and I will give you rest. What you need is a rest. But do one thing. When you go from me, don't go away empty. Because if you go away empty, the labor and the heavy laden that you had before, it will be more, it will be greater. So therefore, don't go empty. Take my yoke upon me and go. Amen. In other words, you come into the church with this bag on the presence of God. The Lord says, leave the, you leave your yoke here. But when you go home, take this yoke which I give you. Take this yoke with you when you go, for it is easy, it is light. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Take this with you and go. So you come with your burden, leave it here, and go with the yoke which God is giving you. And when you go, you shall find rest for your souls. I've seen many Christians who come to the presence of God, who want to, sorry, many people who come to the presence of God, want to give their life to the Lord. They'll put their labor and their heavy laden upon the feet of the Lord and say, Lord, I want to give you, deliver me. The Lord delivered them and they want to go free. They won't come back. And I've seen their life getting messed up even worse than they were before. But when you come to the presence of God, you lay all your labor and your heavy laden, say, Lord, you got anything? Take my, take my yoke. My yoke is very easy. It is very light. What is the response, honey? Nothing. I will come at 10 o'clock to the church. Start the prayer at 10.30. Encourage the brethren, 10.45. That's all you do. Just do the opening prayer. Just encourage the brethren. Just keep doing that. That's the yoke for you. When you are faithful in that yoke, then one day God will say, Take care of the service meeting. I go to release Johnson. You take care of the service. When this yoke is getting ready, when you're faithful in that yoke which you have, he will make sure that you are, that yoke is easy and light for you. He will tell, learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart. Don't leave that meek and lowliness in your heart from the day you started your Christian life till now. Never lose that. Then the Lord promotes you to a higher authority and makes you a master over many things. Praise God. Now, Apostle Paul says, I am read for me. 1 Corinthians 7.22 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 7.22 
For he that is born in the Lord bring his servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise also he that is born being free is Christ's servant. See here. Look at that, the verse there on the screen. He that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is a Lord's free man. Is a Lord's free man. In the world you are a servant. But in the presence of God, you are the Lord's servant, Lord's free man. God says you are free. You are not, you're not a servant here. You are a free man. Now, in other words, whatever job you are doing outside the church, doesn't matter what job you are doing inside the church, God will treat you as he would treat anyone. He has no respect of persons. Next one. Likewise also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. But once you are Christ's servant, once you are free, he wants you to be his servant. Amen. That is why Apostle Paul says, Amen. He says, As you have given your members to sin, to be slaves of sin, and were serving sin, now yield your members to righteousness and to eternal life. For the wages of sin is so long you were given your members for sinning and you were slaves unto death. But now give your members to righteousness and become slaves unto everlasting life. So now God wants each and every one of us who were once servants. You came here as a servant, but now you are the bride of Christ. You came inside as a servant. Nothing now. I've got nothing. I'm very poor. You know how Ruth came to Boaz's field? She came to do a voluntary job. Not reaping, but gleaning. Reaping is being paid, gleaning is not paid. Unpaid, voluntary work from morning till evening. Don't take any rest. Completely working, going behind the reapers and gleaning and gleaning and gleaning. No job, no profit for the employer. Waste of having those people. She came to glean the field. Guess what? She became the wife of the owner of that field. From being a servant, she became a bride. She became the wife of Boaz. Look at our Lord Jesus Christ. How did he come to this earth? How did he come to this earth? As a servant. Who took upon in the form of a servant. But later he became what? The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Master of all creation. Every knees bow before him. Every tongue confess that Jesus is our Lord. He became a bridegroom. Your, your lifestyle in the kingdom of God will start with humbleness. But God will make it glorious. God will make you to come to a place where you are being exalted. Glory be to God. So we need. Second one I want to say is Herculean. Or in other words, the violent taken by force. The word violent, another word I am giving here that starts with H. I'm using the word Herculean. You are a Herculean in the kingdom of God. You are not only humble in the kingdom of God, you are also Herculean in the kingdom of God. Who is this Herculean? You know who is the Herculean? Herculean is the one who hates looking at the clock on a Sunday morning during the message time. <laughs> amen. Why are you not saying Amen? Amen. Thank you. Have you looked at the clock on you have to tell me, Brother, Brother Johnson, it's 12.30, keep on preaching. <laughs> Say it to me, somebody. Keep on preaching. Keep on preaching, Joseph, until 6. Tell me, Stuart, keep on preaching. God bless you, my brother. I love you so much. Praise God. Why are you fishing, Joseph? Praise God. Can you preach till 6? Keep on preaching. Somebody say to me, keep on preaching. Keep on preaching. <laughs> Can I hear Sister Daphne say that when we keep on preaching, brother? No. Yes. Amen. Herculean. Violence taken by force. A Christian life starts with humbleness, but from humbleness you become a Herculean. You become a violent. Amen. Praise God. Read for me. Second, Second Kings chapter 21. Chapter 22. Sorry, Joshua. Second Kings chapter 22.
Verse 11 for me, please. 11, yeah. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the book of the law, and that he went his court. Thank you, brother. This is, a, this is a king. Listen now. This is a king by name called King Josiah, who is the king of Judah. Even before he was born, hundred years before, he was prophesied by a prophet unto King Jeroboam that there is coming a boy, there is coming a young child, shall be born in the house of David by name called Josiah. In the Old Testament, there was only a one king among the Old Testament saints of God who was given a name before the birth is Josiah. Who is the other one? Who is the other one before he was born? His name was Bert. Huh. Emmanuel. He shall call his name Emmanuel. Our Lord Jesus Christ's name was mentioned before the birth. Before our Lord Jesus Christ, another king who was named was by name called King Josiah. He was eight years old when he became a king. How, how old are you, Jenny? You're going to be? This January? You're going to be six. Josiah was eight years when he became the king of Judah. You know what he did? When the book was read before him, about the book of Jeremiah probably, when the book was read to him, he, he read this close. He read this close. Now, he sends a few people to a prophet by prophetess by name called Hulda. He never told her what he did. Neither the servants were never told what Josiah did. But see what she said. See what Hulda is saying. Read for me verse 19. But read verse 19, the same chapter on Stress TV. Verse 19. Yeah. Because thine heart. Let read a bit loudly for me. Because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou hearest what I spake against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, they should become a desolation and a curse. And hast rent thy clothes and wept before me. I also have heard the say the Lord. See, he verse 11 says that Josiah only read the clothes, but Hulda says the Lord told her he just did not rent his clothes, but he wept before me. There's a difference between crying and weeping, you know. Crying comes out of anger, crying comes out of frustration. But weeping comes out of sorrow. That is why it says Jesus wept. It didn't say Jesus cried, but Jesus wept. There was a sadness in his heart. There was a sorrow in his heart. Can't say the death of Lazarus. Here, Josiah wept. He read his clothes and he wept. This speaks about the humbleness that he had. His life was so humble, his heart was so tender that when he reads the word of God, he will cry. He will weep. I've seen the rock cry. I've seen the rock weeping when he reads the word of God. His heart would break. I've seen Jenny, amen, weeping in the presence of God when she reads the word of God. Somebody being touched by the word of God, the word of God will speak to them very strongly, they will weep. Their heart will break. Joseph was such a person. His heart was so tender when he read the word of God. He read to him, he read his clothes and he wept before the Lord. The Lord says, I have seen you. I have heard you, the Lord says to Josiah. You know what Josiah did now? Amen. Praise God. Now read for me. Amen. 23, 3. 23, 3. And the king stood by the pillar. Thank you. And made a covenant before the Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just read for me the last part of the verse. Verse 3, last part of the verse. And all the people stood to the covenant. Thank you. And all the people stood to the covenant. The king stood and all the people stood. Amen. This man was so humble and he made a decision before the Lord that he would turn to the Lord. That he would turn to the Lord, cleave to the Lord. And when he stood, the people also stood. He's not a man who says, come on, clap your hands everybody. Come on, raise your hands everybody. Come on, stand to your feet everybody. Come on, he won't tell that. He will just clap. And the people will clap with him. He will just dance and the people will dance with him. 
the, when he stood, the people stood with him. You know what he did? Praise be to God's holy name. Amen. He brought us such a big cleansing in the house of God. For the first time, he brought a big reformation that he threw down the altars which Solomon made. Solomon made goddesses of Milcom, Chemosh, and Ashtoreth, Molech, Baal, all these so-called gods' images were completely burnt and turned into ashes and was mixed in the river Kidron. Done by Josiah. What a violent man he was. What a, what a Herculean man he was. I, was. I still remember when I was a child, like Jenny, my grandfather used to smoke. He used to have cigarettes under his pillow. Secretly he would smoke. Somebody will buy for him, I don't know who it was. All the other, all my parents, my dad, mom, everybody will keep it quiet. But there was a fire burning in me. I can't take this. I would go and put my hand under his pillow, take the smoke box, and I would crunch them to pieces and break them. He would take the stick to run and beat me. I would run away from him. But this is what I did. I don't allow him to smoke. I couldn't have a cigarette or, a, or any kind of smoking thing inside my house. I want our house to be the house of God. While I was a young boy, 10 years, 15 years, my heart was burning with fire that our house should be a house of God. I could not have it in my house. And when I go out for shopping, there will be two thugs standing outside and they will try to come and threaten me to say, why did you do this to your granddad? The news will have already gone to them. It was me who did that. I wasn't afraid of them. I would look into their face and I would say, I'm a child of God. I will do this, man. What can you do to them? Young boy. There was a violent in me from a young age. By the grace of God. When you are a Herculean for the kingdom of God. When you are a violent for the kingdom of God. God will honor you. God will exalt you. Glory be to God's holy name. Verse 25 and 26. Just read for me quickly. 23. 25 and 26. You read. Uh, Amen. Praise God. Yeah, read it for me. 25 and 26. 25 and 26. Yeah. Verse 23. Mm. Um, yeah. Unlike unlike unto him, there was no king before him that turns the Lord with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses, neither after him arose there any like him. Notwithstanding the Lord turned not from the faces of the his great wrath, wherewith <clears throat> his anger was kindled against Judah, because of all the publications that uh, Manasseh. Manasseh had bought in the Lord. See, you see here, in 25, Josiah turned to the Lord. But in 26, God did not turn. Josiah turned. His violence was so much that he, had take, he wanted to take the kingdom of God by force and he was very herculean for the Lord but notwithstanding or in other words Josiah stood the people stood but God did not stand with them God already decided that there has to be a restoration in Israel and that can only happen by the land of Israel having rest or enjoying its Sabbath for 70 years how long? 70 years. Those 70 years, they were in Babylon. The same thing happened even before they were in Egypt. The Canaanites, the Ammonites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Hittites, and the Jebusites, when they were all doing all kinds of wickedness. Do you remember what I mentioned last time in Luke, uh, Leviticus 19? Brother Rob, do you remember what I said the other day in Luke 9, uh, Leviticus 19? I said, they were committing adultery. God said it is. It is wickedness. Then it is sorry, it is abomination. God says it is abomination. Then they went and then they, they did homosexuality. God called them. It is abomination. Then they went ahead and did bestiality, and God called it confusion. 
when abomination, wickedness and confusion came to the extreme, God said, I'm going to drive these people out of Canaan and going to bring my people of Israel and put them in the land of Canaan for them. But he has to give them 70 years for that. So he took them all out and made the people of Israel to stay in Egypt for 430 instead of 400. The Lord told Abraham, 400 years your seed will be in the land of Egypt. But they stayed for 430. Why? Because that 70 years has to be accomplished in Canaan before people of Israel come. So 30 years they extra they spent in Egypt and remaining 40 years in wilderness. Altogether 70. You understand? Or the 70 came? So the Lord gave 70 years rest to the land of Canaan before people of Israel came. When the people of Israel came and did the same thing, wickedness, abomination, confusion, the Lord took them to Babylon and gave 70 years rest for the land of Canaan and then brought them back. So God's plan are not our ways. God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Whatever He do, He will do it for the good of us. He will work for the good later. But that time it will be painful. See, when you are violent, God is honoring that. But you need to understand, God is more violent for His kingdom than you. He loves each and every one of us to be violent. He loves a brother or a sister who is violent for His kingdom. Glory be to God's own name. I've got so many verses to say, but I don't have time. But the reason why they came to Babylon to be in the 70 years is you really know what the reason why he, they came there. One of the reasons is Daniel prayed and his prayer was hindered by the prince of the kingdom of Persia. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood the angel that should come and answer the prayer for Daniel. Michael has to come and assist him to put this guy out to, for, for the angel to come and speak to Daniel. What we understand from here. A violent brother, a violent sister would be involved in intercessory ministry, in spiritual warfare. If you are violent for the kingdom of God, if any brother, sister are violent for the kingdom of God, your prayer will be always against wrestling against powers, principalities, rulers and darkness of this present world, spiritual wickets in heavenly places. Ask somebody, a brother, a brother or a sister, sorry brother, don't take, don't, don't take any offense of anybody here. Ask somebody to pray. Lord, I pray that Lord, you would bless this meeting for us, Master. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would touch us, Master. Heal us, Master. Speak to us, Master. How long? Family prayer. Lord, we pray that you would supply our needs, Lord. Do this, Lord. That, Lord. That, Lord. This, Lord. So many shopping lists we have before God. And say, Amen. No. God wants somebody to be a violent in the kingdom of God who would wrestle against power, who would wrestle against princes, prince parties. As soon as you enter in that house, listen the spirit, what spirit is working in that house? And bind the spirit. Unless you bind the strong man, you will not take the city. Unless you bind the strong man, you will not take that house. Unless you bind the strong man, you, not, you can't take that soul for the kingdom of God. You must be involved in the, in the spiritual warfare ministry. Every one of our brothers. And you know what's the secret? In 2 Corinthians 10, verse 6, Apostle Paul says, And having the readiness to revenge all disobedience when our obedience is fulfilled. When our obedience is fulfilled, we will be able to revenge all disobedience. Glory to God. Amen. That's the secret of violence. Secret of being violent is obedience being fulfilled. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 6. Glory to God. Glory to God. Right? Ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Yeah. You, 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 that is why, that is why Apostle Peter says, uh, submit to the Lord, resist the devil, and he will, yeah. Unless you will submit, you will not be able to resist. You will not be able to revenge. So if you have to revenge all disobedience, you have to first come to the fulfillment of obedience. That's what Jesus did. 
His obedience was fulfilled on the cross. The second thing what he did? Second thing what he did? He went to the bottomless pit and took the keys of death and the keys of hell out of the hand of death. He revenged all disobedience in the bottomless pit when his obedience was fulfilled. So also we, if we be a violent brother or a sister, our prayer should always bind in prayer. Amen. When you ask to somebody, please pray for the blessing of this meeting, what will you do? A brother or a sister, be ready all the time. Be on guard. 10.30 you come here. Brother Rob says to you, somebody please pray for the blessing of this meeting. Anyone should stand up and say, in the name of Jesus, I bind the powers of the enemy. I bind the chains of darkness over this meeting. Any unclean spirit that's operating in this meeting, I bind the spirit in Jesus' name and I cast God of the spirit right now. We want those kind of prayer warriors in the church. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Every one of us are called to be prayer warriors. That is what I meant, Herculean. Last thing I would say, conclude. Hungry. I called it hungry because our Lord Jesus said, He that hath an ear, let him hear, hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He is a brother, he is a sister who had ears. In other words, he is hungry. No wonder he says in Matthew 5, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall. They should be filled. In other words, they should be having joy. No wonder our Lord Apostle Paul says in Romans 14, verse 27, Eating and drinking is not the kingdom of God, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You shall be filled with peace. You should be filled with righteousness. You should be filled with joy when you are hungry for the Lord. When you are hungry for His presence. When you are reading the Word, you have to read it as if you are having a full English breakfast. You know, when you are really hungry in the early morning, you get up in the early morning, you are so hungry, and you and you smell that fried bacon, and the, and, the, and the baked beans, and toast, and all the sausage, and everything before you. Just like that, you have to read your Bible. Ooh, hallelujah, praise God. Glory to God. Half an hour, ten chapters gone on your knees. Half an hour, ten chapters gone on your knees. One hour you have stood on your knees and you have read your Bible. Can you imagine? I'll tell you, brothers and sisters. Stay on your knees and read five chapters daily. And come to me and say, Brother, give me an opportunity to do the Bible reading. You come to the Bible reading. You have to stay standing on your knees every day reading your Bible. Your Bible reading will be a prayer for a prayerful Bible reading. You won't finish it. While you are, while you are yet reading the Holy the reading, the Holy Ghost will come and take over the meeting. Then we revive in the church. Hungry for Jesus. Hungry for his word. Hungry for prayer. Hungry for the presence of God. I feel I don't feel like stopping. I don't I'm not talking about Sunday morning. I'm talking about my daily prayer life. I don't feel like coming out of my prayer room. No. Jenny's mother, when she was here, she's going to come back again. She'll come back. She, she's a very early morning bird. She gets up very early morning. She'll very frighteningly, she'll open the door, the kitchen door. I'll be praying that. She doesn't want to disturb me. I said, no, 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 keep coming. So even before she gets up, I have to finish my prayer. And when she has to come and make a coffee, she has to come in hot water. She's got all the ready blood to go in the morning in the kitchen. So even before she comes, I have to finish. I try to finish my prayer before Jenny comes to the kitchen. But while she's coming, I still sometimes pray. Glory to God for that. I don't feel like stopping. I don't feel like closing my prayer. Why? Each and every one of us are called to me. I'm not saying I'm hungry. I want to be hungry. I desire to be hungry. I'm not attained yet. I still have a long way to go for me. I'm still like a child in the kingdom of God. I still feel like a baby. There's a lot to grow. There's a lot to learn for me. There's a lot to hang on to fight. But let us be hungry in the kingdom of God. Praise be to God's holy name. Acts 13, 38 to 52. Amen. A big chapter, just turn, Acts 13. Only we will read a few verses. We haven't got time. Go home and read Acts 13. And I want to finish here. Acts 13, 1 3. Acts 13. You got it? Don't read the whole. We haven't got time to read the whole chapter. Amen. Please can you read verse 42 for me? So from what I will read verse 41. I will read verse 41. Please, I will have your Bibles ready. Or if you have your screen, you can look at the screen. Joshua has got the verse on the Bible. 41. Behold, ye despise us and wonder and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. Glory to God. 
And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. So, here, Apostle Paul speaks to the Gentiles and says, You are not justified by law, but you are being justified by faith in Jesus Christ. As soon as he heard this, the Jews just went out of the synagogue. They said, We are going, we don't agree with it. Because they believe that by keeping of the laws, they are being justified. justified. But he's saying, No, you are no more justified by law. You are justified by faith in Jesus Christ. And when the, Gen and when the Jews left, the Gentiles come and say to him, could you please come next Sabbath also and preach for us the same topic? On the same topic, justification, justification by faith in Jesus Christ. Can you preach that? So all the people came. One Gentile went to another Gentile. Another Gentile went to another Gentile. Everybody went to Come on, come on. There's something about us. Something different from what we heard in the Old Testament. Come on, let's all come. The whole synagogue was filled with Gentiles. And when the Jews saw it, you know what they did? Read for me. Verse 14. 42, 25, sorry. Someone read verse 40. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and contradiction and blasphemy. They opposed the things spoken of by Paul. Ha! Huh. Now, this is what they did. They were filled with envy. They were filled with envy. But the Gentiles were filled with hunger. Amen? Gentiles were filled with hunger. The Jews were filled with envy. Read for, the, for me, brother, the last part of verse 46, brother. And judge yourselves. Read from there for me. 46, last part. 46, verse 46, last part. It, yeah. it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. Mm. But since you reject it mm. and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, See, here they are unworthy of everlasting life. People who are filled with envy concerning the doctrine of the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ leading to justification, they were unworthy of everlasting life. But look at the Gentiles who are filled with hunger for this word that came from Paul. Read for me next verse, brother. For so the Lord has commanded us, mm. I have set you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be for salvation to the end of the earth. Yeah. 48, 48, last part of the verse 48. And many as had been appointed to eternal life to me. Thank you. You see, a two group of people, one is unworthy to everlasting life, another poor people ordained or appointed for everlasting life. Praise God. Praise God. You have a Jews there, you have a Gentiles there. The Jews are filled with envy, the Gentiles are filled with hunger. About the envy people, Apostle Paul says, you are unworthy to everlasting life. Gentiles, he saying, you are ordained to eternal life. When these two things happened, read the last verse for me, 452. And the disciples were filled with joy with the Holy Spirit. See, the joy of the Holy Ghost was there. In other words, the kingdom of God was there. <coughs> the kingdom of God was established among the people when the people were ordained to eternal life. What makes you to have joy in the Holy Ghost? When you are hungry for the kingdom of God. When you are hungry for the word of God, it makes you ordained to eternal life, leading to joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen? How many of you blessed this morning? Don't check out. Please tell me. What are the three things we need in the kingdom of God? Say with me. Yeah. Hungry. Humble. Herculean and hungry. These three things may the Lord give for each and every one of us in the kingdom of God that we may understand the kingdom lifestyle and live for the glory of God in the coming days. We belong to a we belong to a thank We belong to a brother. What was the message about? Kingdom of God. What was the message, Stephen? Sorry? What was the message today about? What was the theme? <laughs> What's the theme of the message? Remind me. I was listening. Brother Stephen, what's the theme of the message today? Amen. 
You got it, Brother William? Yeah, you got it. Everybody? We belong to the kingdom of God. We don't belong to any denomination. We do not belong to any religion. We do not belong to any organization. We belong to the kingdom of God. Inside the kingdom of God, there are three attributes we have. One is hum humble, humble, Herculean, and hungry. May the Lord bless us today. Shall we pray? Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All his wonders, compassion, and purity. Lord, for this wonderful morning hour, you have given us to be in your presence. All the dear ones who are standing right now, we pray, Lord, that you will stretch forth your hands and place it upon the head and bless the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord, I pronounce a blessing upon the congregation. All through this week, in our job, in our business, in our family life, in our personal life, in our children's education, in our going out, in our coming in, in our transaction, everything that we do, let the good hand of the Lord be with us and bless us, Master. Abundantly bless us, O oh Lord. And the Lord, with next, next week when we come together, Lord, help us to come with testimonies even about the Lord influence that we have had in your presence through your word, O oh Master. Bless each and every one of us, O oh Daddy. Give all the glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us until our Lord Jesus Christ returns in glory. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God be with you.